Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Off the Ranch. I finished the chicken watering system without you. I felt like you guys were probably getting bored of me gluing pipes together. So over the last couple of days, I just really like pieced it together a little bit at a time. And it's pretty much done. Like, it's functional. It totally works now. For those who don't know, water comes down on this roof into that pipe, comes through that pipe right here, and then down into this pipe. And let's talk about this roof. That roof there, that roof there, both come in these pipes, they join at this T, they come down here. So one roof is here, one roof is here, and you'll notice these pipes are clear, right? And that's because you can see that there's water in it! That's why I got clear pipes, because I wanted to be able to see the exact level of water. So this pipe corresponds to the water barrel that's on this side, inside the house. This one is the one that's on this side, inside the house. You can see they are connected by this pipe here with a closed valve right now. Both levels are even, that's just because I have opened them to watch it equilibrate. So then after these clear pipes, it tees off. One goes into the house, and then one goes down here to the waterers. Same thing on this side. It, well, there's another pipe in the way here, but it tees off right here, goes into the house, this one goes to the waterers. I'll tell you about this pipe in a second. Let's go inside the house and check it out. Already got some eggs this morning. Here's our water barrels. I went ahead and put some plywood down there just to distribute the weight a little better. So the water comes in through that pipe and that pipe, goes up into the bottom of this rain barrel. Same thing on this side. And it fill, hello, didn't even see you there. It fills them from the bottom. Fills this one from the bottom. It works, physics, I promise. And eventually these things are gonna get all the way full, right? But that's not an issue because they have these vents in the top. You can see both of them right there. So as the water level is coming up, air will be escaping out of there. Because if there was no place for air to escape, the water would meet pressure and then wouldn't come up in here anymore. But air escapes. Those pipes on the top do another thing as well. If, let's say, this one is only half full, this one is all the way full, it'll fill up and then the extra water as it continues to fill up will come up through that and then it will connect over here and start dumping into this. So as one barrel overflows, it will fill up the other barrel. If both barrels are full and they're both overflowing, it will go up higher and then come down here and this is a drain. That's an overflow tube that goes to the outside world. So that's what that other pipe over there is. It comes down and straight out and dumps right there. We also have valves on the end of both of these waterers so we can empty the whole system. So that is at the lowest point in the barrels. So if I left that open, it would completely drain the barrel on this side, but it would not drain the barrel on this side. The reason for that is so I can clean the barrel. So I can totally drain only one barrel and then I can take this lid off and I can go in there and actually the barrel unscrews down here too. So I can take that whole barrel out without cutting any pipes, just pull it all out, take it outside, scrub it all up. And I still have an entire full water barrel over here. So we don't have any like laps in water. And then after I put the barrel back in, hook it all back up, I turn my little valve outside that is keeping this water barrel and this water barrel separate. And then it pulls out half the water in this one and fills up over there. It's a genius system if I do say so myself. It's my, my second iteration of this. Actually, if I was ever gonna do this again, I have some extra things I would do, but hopefully I don't have to do it again. This should, the only thing that'll mess up this is freezing pipes, I think. I think that's the only thing that could break this. And so my third iteration, I have plans to make the pipes weatherproof. This is just temper, it's to keep the chickens from going up there. I'm gonna put an entire wall here so the chickens can't go around those barrels at all. And in the middle here, I'm gonna have some sort of feeding station. Cause right now we just have like this little metal trash can out there with the food in it and it's down, like the kids can't reach down there and scoop the food, it's too far. So I'm gonna build something in here to where I can just tell the kids, hey, go feed the chickens, make sure they have water and go get the eggs and they do everything. My plan in life is to make my life as easy as possible and that involves using my children as slaves. I just have to make a system that the tiny humans can use. Oh, one more little thing that I forgot to tell you guys. You know the white chicken? You know the one that I talk about more than any other chicken and it's never good things? 
the white chicken, every time I come let him out of this thing in the morning, she flies up on top of the roof and jumps over and just starts wandering about. And I wanted to just let her get eaten by a coyote, but all the kids in Meredith said I couldn't do that. So I grabbed her yesterday and I clipped her wings. That girl can't fly anymore. Sorry, not sorry. Not sorry at all. It was actually really easy. I never clipped chicken's wings, never seen them clipped. I looked on YouTube, found some videos. Just go, it's just like cutting toenails, doesn't hurt them. Super easy. And now she doesn't have her flight feathers on one side, so she theoretically can't fly. We'll see. It's been yesterday. She did not get out all day after I did it. We'll see what she does today. I really wanted to just like stay out here and film her on her first flight just because you only do it on one side and then they like try to fly and they just like go sideways and crash. And I just wanted to film her crashing in slow motion just so I could just smile at it and replay it over and over. But Meredith also said that'd be weird and mean too, so. Stupid white chicken. The kids are in my Humvee and they're pretending like they're in the parade and they're waving to people and saying Merry Christmas. You have to say hi to Baba from the door, okay? Hey, it's locked. The window is locked. Maybe it's all doors. Maybe Christmas. Hi, Jason. Jason, it's my kids. I want Christmas. Baba is, is no, right I mean, my dad. No, I mean, say hi Baba. will be quick. I can open it. Hey, do you want me to drive? Because I will be good at driving. No. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Are y'all in a parade? Mm -hmm. What are y'all doing? You driving the Humvee in the parade? Mm -hmm. Here, a sticker. Oh, thanks. Here, lollipop. Oh, thank you. Ooh, lollipop. Thanks, thanks, here thanks. Here. I can, do, you, do you have any beer? Here. Do you have any beer? Here. Here. Oh, th oh, thanks. Thank y'all. You're the best. Here, camera. Oh, camera. Thanks. And a phone. Wow, this is great. What else you got? Here's a broom. A broom. Nice. Bike. Oh, motorbike! And a door bike! A door bike! Yes! Um, hat? Um, thanks. Boop. Um, secret? This is the best parade of my life. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Hey, Mary. Hey. You know what the worst thing ever is? What? Um, wanting to buy someone something really awesome for Christmas, but you can't find it because it's out of stock. Like our entire store? Like our entire merch store. Show Sorry. I, I need to show you guys. We got shirts back! Finally, so we've had this pretty much whole December. No shirts for you guys in the warehouse. Um, sorry, they're all out of stock. You guys are awesome, just bought them all. But now, we've got, Brent, <laughs> I, I moved, I moved over here. You have to move the camera when I move. Hey, hey, we have new shirts. Check it out, so we got the Demolition Ranch logo right on my left breast. Um, you ready for this? So, um, if you don't know what this is, you're an amateur and we can't be friends. It's from a Demolition Ranch. Clip. I'll put it right here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh. I have never wanted to hang out with someone so bad in my entire life, but if you do not know what this is called, you're an amateur and we cannot be friends. Tr trigger bolt jacket pin. Blaster. <laughs> and you guys like that clip so much, so I was like, let's make a shirt out of that. And so now we have, we have shirts on the website. Once again, and we're very sorry they weren't there before, um, but we'll try our best to keep them in stock. They probably won't because you guys are crazy. Um, we'll try our best to get them to you by Christmas. If you order quickly, like the next couple of days, we can do that for sure. If it's like five days from now, it's gonna be a little dicey. So, muzzle brake shirts. Get yours now. Uh, to the barn. Thanks for holding the camera for me, Mary. You're the best. If you would actually just follow me around all day long, it would make my job way easier. Okay, I'll just hold the camera. To the barn, I have something else really cool to show you. What happened? I, I got in, but I can't get out. You got up in the back of the Humvee, but now you're stuck? Yes. Yeah. I, I got on that one, and that one, and that one. Oh, you, so you, you rock climbed up there? Mm-hmm. And you got up here, and you've been in here for like 10 minutes, stuck in the back of my Humvee? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah? What happened to her? Um, she's stuck in there. She climbed up there and got stuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are we going to do now? 
Get me out of here. Nah, let's go eat lunch, Link. See ya, Annie. Just kidding, just kidding. Come here, I'll get you. Okay, I have something I wanna show you. It's a new toolbox. Look at this thing. This is made by Rhino Metals, and it is like a serious toolbox. This, I mean, I have like, I have like a, you know, a pretty good, I mean, this one's lasted me, but it's, it's made of thin metal, it's flimsy, it's not, listen. That is a toolbox right there. So I just got it. It weighs, uh, it weighs like four to 500 pounds. So I can't really, the thing is, this is just a, like a metal pallet. And then I sat it on a wooden pallet because I didn't really know I shouldn't do that. There's like bolts that go, I gotta figure out how to get it off of the metal pallet and the wooden pallet. It's like bolted to this metal pallet down here. It's just a thing for transport, of course, but I gotta get off of that. <laughs> Wish me luck. Wish I had some friends. Demolisha, come to my house and help me! Perfect. It's built. So let me tell you why this toolbox is better than this. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You can just look at them and go, yeah, that one's way cooler. So this is made by Rhino Metals, rhinosafe.com. Um, I'll put a link in the description. This is their Ironworks line. It's all man-made. All these welds that you see on here are done by a man, not a machine, in the United States. All this stuff is United States only, and it's freaking awesome. So the differences between this and this, that is not man-made, that is obviously machine-made. And this one is just much beefier. All this metal is way thicker, way stronger. Each one of these four casters is rated at a thousand pounds. A common spot of weakness in toolboxes is the drawer pulls because there's a lot of weight and when it comes out, it's all extended at the very end. This one, these, can hold up to 200 pounds per drawer. So let's try it out. I weigh 200 pounds. I definitely would not do that on this one. Ugh. It's gonna tip it because there's nothing in the thing. Yep. But it doesn't break it, which is the thing. Assuming the toolbox is full of tools, it wouldn't tip over. But also, you wouldn't put all 200 pounds on the very end. The top of this one, made out of thin metal. The top of this one, made out of thick metal, 12 gauge steel, which is the same as what a lot of gun safe sides are made out of. It has a locking bar in it, so you can stick that thing in there, and then you can put a big lock right there, and none of the drawers will be able to open. On the right side is a locking cabinet. Some shelves in there, you can move them around. It stays locked up, so you can put valuable stuff in there, don't have to worry about it. So we have a heavy duty metal handle over here, it's on wheels, so it's movable if need be. Totally lockable, totally secure. Then you have the big, strong metal top. You can do anything you want to. It has a clampable work edge here. It's just is gonna be really nice to have this. And just keep everything more organized. Like, that's not, that's not helping me. But something small that I like about this thing is the drawers are padded, and when you close it, you don't have to shove it closed. You can just click it in and it's closed. So this one, 
what a mess. Usually it's it's fairly organized, but over time, you have to you can't just like push it to close it. You have to slam it to close this one to where it latches. Because if you just kind of push it here, it'll rock back open like that. So you have to push it and slam it, which over time jumbles everything up. This one though, I'm gonna be able to just go. Perfect. I just spent a little bit of time putting stuff in here. So check it out. Look how good it looks. I still haven't really figured out where I'm gonna put everything, but I mean, it's nice to have like all my sockets and ratchets all in one place. And I, I'm kinda, I'm gonna keep this thing, I think. I don't really need more tool room because I'm obviously going from a smaller one to a bigger one, so I have ample room. What I'm thinking with this one is maybe like gun parts or something, because I also like having my tools hanging up on the wall. So I have a lot of them that I'm gonna leave hanging on the wall. Some of these will probably make it into the toolbox, like maybe my wrenches and stuff, but I like it being up here because it's easy to see, it's clean, neat looking, and it's easy to find things. But I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this now. Gun gun tools or gun part gun parts might be good. I have like a bunch of AR-15 parts and things. I don't know. What do you think? So anyway, check it out. Also, this is from rhinosafes.com. So they make gun safes that are just like this, like heavy duty, like rustic steel, like that. Super cool. And they gave me a coupon code to give to you. It's Demo Ranch 15 and it applies to everything on their site. They have gun safes, they have tool chests, they even have bigger ones than this, wider and taller. Um, they have furniture, like solid steel furniture, thick stuff like this, like desk. Who makes that kind of stuff? These guys do. And uh, just to be clear, I don't get any kickback from this coupon code. They just thought the channel was cool, wanted to give you guys something, and I get no kickback from it. So you will save hundreds of dollars by using the code. It's 15% off anything on their site, and I get nothing. It's just for you guys. Oh, look, there's deer. Do you see the deer? There's deer hanging out with my chickens. And the white chicken is in the coop. And look at that sky. Man. I'm just gonna go out there and check on the chickens, but I don't want to scare the little deer away. Those little baby deer. Thanks for watching Off the Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. I just noticed when I do this, I do like a little kick with my foot, which you guys can't even see because it's down below the camera. So let me just show you. Let me show you what it looks like where you can see my you see my feet. No, nope, hold on. I just want you guys. I want you guys to see what what actually goes down right here. Um, I'm gonna use something that can be like. Uh, so we'll, let's pretend this is the camera. So it looks, it looks kind of like this. Thanks for watching. I love you. And I'll see you next time. We're not talking about killing people. Just say I want to murder you. Oh. <laughs>